Hi friends, in this video we are going to talk about how to schedule python scripts without task manager or cron jobs. So for this purpose we are going to use the schedule python module. The whole content of this video is present in this blog post. I have given you the source code and examples so that you can easily implement the python schedule module in your environment. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. So a simple example would be something like you have a python function and you want to run it periodically. Generally what you would do is you will create a python script and schedule that in a task scheduler or a cron job. But if you don't want to use the task scheduler or cron job, you can annotate the python function something like this and use a while loop to infinitely run the script and trigger this function as per the required periodicity. Well how can you install python schedule module? It's really simple. You can use the python minus mpip install schedule because it's a pip module. Let's see a simple example. Suppose you have a function something like this. And if you want to run it say for every 2 minutes, you can just import the schedule module and say schedule every 2 minutes do this job and job is the function which you want to trigger and create a while loop and say schedule dot run pending and run this while loop infinitely. We are using time dot sleep one second because it has some performance benefits. So always write time dot sleep one. So schedule dot run pending will do the timekeeping and it will trigger the function if required. So that's how the schedule module works. So just by a single line, you can actually run your Python function as per the desired periodicity. So let's see some examples one by one. If you want to run the schedule every x minutes, hours, seconds, something like that, you can do that using something like this schedule dot every two minutes or hours, days, weeks or seconds. So if you use a syntax something like this, the schedule will trigger starting from now. So let's try to see this in action. I'm going to take a blank folder and I'm going to open it with VS code. So before writing the script, let's try to install the schedule module. So I'm going to open a command prompt and I'm going to write python minus mpip install schedule. So we have installed the schedule python module. Now let's try to create a file. I will just name it index.py and let's try to import the schedule module. Let's say we want to run this python function every two minutes. So this is our python function. So since we want to run this function every two minutes, I'm going to write schedule dot every and give the number as two and write minutes and write do here the function name is job so that's it now you have scheduled job to run every two minutes from now and obviously at the end you have to write while true schedule run pending and time dot sleep one let's try to import the time module also in order to demo this easily let's try to make this two seconds instead of minutes and let's try to save this and run this so you can see every two seconds the job is being run and if you just control C the script is going to stop so basically the script will run in an infinite loop and trigger the required function as per the declared periodicity now let's see how to run the schedule at a particular time of the day or the time of the hour something like that so let's see the first use case so if you want to run a python function every day suppose at 10 30 am you can write schedule every one day at 10 30 so in this case, the script will trigger not as per the triggered time, it will trigger as per your declared time mentioned in this at function. That means if you write schedule every day at 10.30, the script will trigger at 10.30 only regardless of when you start the script. So this script would be useful in many practical scenarios because you have control over at what time the schedule will be triggered. For the same way, if you have an hourly job and you want to trigger the schedule at every suppose 15th minute, you can write schedule every one hour or two hours at colon 15 because the syntax is if you want to specify only minutes you have to write colon minutes but if you want to specify the seconds also like if you want it to run at 15 minute 20 second second you can write 15 colon 22 something like that and for every minute jobs you can even specify what second the job should be triggered suppose for every minute if you want to run it at the 50 second second only you can write schedule every one minute at 52 so these are the commands which you can use to have control over at what time the schedule will be triggered. So let's try to see that in action. You can write schedule every one minute at now you got to give the seconds. So you can write colon 25. That means at every minute for the 25th second the schedule should be triggered. In fact, I have printed the current time also so that we can verify the behavior. So let's try to run this script. You can see the schedule is triggered at the 25th second and the next run would be at the next minute 25 seconds. The next thing is how to pass arguments to the job function. Suppose your python function which you want to trigger also takes some input arguments. 
you can pass them to the function by providing extra arguments to the do function. Suppose here in this example, I am triggering this hello function every 3 seconds and it takes an input argument called name. So here I am also giving the name as the next argument for the do function. So this way you can pass arguments to your job functions. In the same way, if you are scheduling your python functions using the decorator, you can also pass arguments here something like this. So here with the repeat decorator, I am telling every 4 seconds and it takes an input called name. So I am telling name equal to Alice. So it triggers every 4 seconds and the input name would be Alice. So this way you can even pass arguments to your schedule functions. Let's talk about handling errors during job execution. Here in this example, we are using the python schedule module and after all it's a python script. If you have an error in a python script, it will stop. That means during the job execution, if there is some error thrown, the whole python script will stop and the schedule will not run. So how can I avoid this? Well the simple thing is to write try accept in the job function or else you can handle it at the schedule module itself. So here in this example, my job function does 1 by 0 which will obviously throw a divided by 0 error. So once the job is triggered, the schedule will stop throwing an error. So one solution could be you can write a decorator and handle the exception in the decorator. For example, I have created a decorator called catch exceptions and I have decorated this function with catch exceptions cancel on failure equal to false. So in this decorator, we are basically just running the job function in a try except method and instead of throwing the error, we are just printing the error. Obviously, if the user chooses to cancel on failure, then we will cancel the job. So if you want to handle exceptions in your job functions, you can write a decorator like this and use the decorator over your job function. In fact, let's try to run this. To make it easy, let's try to run every one second or two seconds and we can remove this. Now let's try to save this and run this. You can see the schedule is still running. The error is just printing but the job is running. One more approach to handle failures is basically extending the scheduler itself. So from the schedule module, you can import the class scheduler and extend it something like this. Here we have inherited the scheduler class and created another class called save scheduler. And here we have overwritten the run job function. And basically we are just wrapping the run job in a try except and we are logging the error and that's it. Instead of using the default scheduler, you can use the save scheduler now and schedule your job something like this. So let's try to see this in action. This is the save scheduler class which is inherited from the scheduler class which is imported from the schedule module and here we are taking a constructor parameter called reschedule on failure which we will use while running the job. So we are overwriting the run job function and here we are doing the base class behavior and if there is an exception we are just logging the error and scheduling the next run and here instead of using the schedule module directly we are creating a scheduler from the safe scheduler and then running the schedule every 3 seconds. So the advantage of using an approach like this instead of the decorator pattern is basically you don't need to annotate every function because the scheduler itself catches the errors. So you can define 100 tasks but you don't need to annotate them because the scheduler itself catches the errors. Let's try to run this. You are seeing the error being printed and again the schedule is being run. So the scheduler is not crashing, it's just printing the errors. So with this approach of extending the scheduler, you can customize the scheduler behavior. Let's see how we can see the logs generated by the schedule module. Notice in this example, we have used the logger named schedule. This is because by default the schedule module uses a logger called schedule. So if you use the schedule module, it will create a logger called schedule and send the logs to that logger. And the logs sent by the schedule module would be at the debug level. So if you want to see the logs printed in the command line by the schedule module, get the logger schedule and set the logging level to debug because schedule module sends the logs at debug level and by default logging will not print the debug level it will print the info level so you need to explicitly mention that the log printing level is debug let's try to see this in action so i am doing the logging basic config because using this i am declaring that the logs should be sent to the command line and then i am saying logging dot get logger schedule and set the logging level to debug and then i am doing some operations like i have scheduled a job I am running all the schedule jobs and I am deleting all the schedules. So I am doing three operations here. Let's try to run this and you can see it's doing a log that it is running all the jobs with this execution and it is running the job and after running the jobs we have set to clear the jobs. So we are seeing a debug that deleting all jobs. In fact if you set the debugging level to the default debugging level which is like the info and let's try to run this. 
you can see the logs because schedule module sends the logs at the debug level we have seen how to see logs sent by the schedule module but what if you want to do additional logging other than schedule module how can you do that well it's the same thing just like catching exceptions you can inherit the schedule module and do additional logging before or after running the job so let's try to see this in action first i've got the schedule logger i mean you can even do the print screen also but I am logging to the same schedule logger and then I have inherited the scheduler class and while running the job I am logging the start time and after running the job I am logging the completed time and the elapsed duration while scheduling the job I am using the new scheduler which is the app scheduler and scheduling the job so let's try to run this so for every job run you are seeing the job script start time and the job script end time and what is the execution time for the job so this way by inheriting the scheduler class, you can do additional logging. All right, we have discussed most of the use cases of using the schedule module. Let's see when not to use the schedule module for job scheduling. Use it only for simple job scheduling actually. If your job scheduling requires some advanced features like concurrent job execution or sub-second precision, go for robust options something like task scheduler, cron jobs, etc. Because by default, schedule module runs only on a single thread and is blocking in nature. Let's see how can we deploy our scripts in a robust way using NSSM as a Windows background service. You know, let's see our scenario. The schedule will run only if the Python script is in running state. And if I actually close the command prompt, the script is not running and your job is not being scheduled. So to run this in practical scenarios, if your command line is being destroyed by mistake, again, the command line should run the script. And the script should also start by itself when the server is started. To do this, you can use an awesome tool called NSSM. So go to the nssm.cc slash download and you can download the latest release. It's just a zip file and extract the zip file to C drive. And here in the folder win64, you have nssm.exe. Now open a command prompt in administrator mode and go to the folder location. So I'm gonna write cd nssm224 win64. And here I'm in the folder. So here I'm gonna write nssm install. And let's try to write the service name, something like Python service. So here you'll get a dialog box where you can create a Windows service. So let's try to run our Python script as a Windows service. So the application path would be python.exe and the startup directory would be this folder where my Python script is present. So I'm going to copy paste the startup directory here and we have to run the Python script, right? The arguments would be index.py and afterwards you need to go to the IO tab and we have to declare the output file where the command line output would be printed. So let's try to print the output here in this folder only. So I'm going to write the folder location and then write something like logs.txt and I'll do the same thing for the error output also. So here I'm going to write logs.txt. So the output of the command line or the error of the command line would be printed in a file called logs.txt. So here in the file rotation tab, you can even specify log rotation. That means the output file, if it becomes bigger and bigger, maybe it can stop the process. So you can rotate the file for every say one MB or for every 10 days, something like that. And here in the exit actions, if the application stops other than graceful stopping, it will restart the application. And here in the details tab, you can see startup tab is automatic. That means the service will start automatically after the system starts. So just install the service. It's installed successfully. And now if you go to the services application, you can search for Python service. And if you start the service, the Python script is running. And here you got logs.txt. If I open this, the job is running as a Windows background service. If you don't want to run the service, you can just right click and stop the service. And if you want to delete the service, you can write sc delete python underscore service. And if you want to create the service again, you can use the NSSM like NSSM install python service or whatever the service name you want. So this way using NSSM, you can even run your Python script as a Windows background service so that it will start automatically upon system startup. And even if due to some reason, if the script crashes, it will restart again. So that's it guys. This is how you can use the Python schedule module to schedule your Python scripts without any task scheduler or cron jobs. The whole content of this video is present in this blog post. I have given you the source code and examples so that you can easily implement the Python schedule module in your environment. I have also given additional references so that you can do further reading. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.